Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We're playing as the HRE, the Holy Roman Empire. So if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Been craving some Medieval 2 vanilla back on the channel and I thought why not let's play as the Holy Roman Empire we're gonna be doing a long campaign 45 regions I'm gonna try and take Rome so if you like the sound of that I could definitely see myself doing more campaigns on medieval 2 this could be the start of something so let me know if you'd like me to do other medieval 2 factions The Holy Roman Empire stretches across a vast expanse of Europe. Ruled over by the Emperor, who is crowned by the Pope himself, the Empire's influence is strong and far-reaching. From the moment that Charlemagne was crowned Emperor, the soldiers of the Reich have fought and died for victory. Yet war, even when waged by a holy empire, is still a brutal affair. It is the Germans who wield the most power in the Empire. Though it exists as a shadow of what once was, it will take a great general to lead the Empire to its former glory. Alrighty fellas, as we're loading on in, I will go through my tactics and strategy for this series, but welcome to the Holy Roman Empire, arguably one of the strongest, or if not the strongest faction in the game, we're under, currently under the reign of Emperor Heinrich the Chivalrous, Prince Henry as well, he has a daughter Agnes and Leopold, our family tree is secure for now, we've got a bunch of fantastic generals as well, von Saxony, Mandorf, Otto von Kessel, and that's quite a lot. So, basically, the Holy Roman Empire really excels in their army roster. It's incredibly well balanced. Sort of towards the late game, it does suffer slightly, but overall, if we can get the ball rolling, we can absolutely snowball this campaign if we're lucky. So, there's a couple ways that we can uh, expand and conquer in this Holy Roman Empire campaign. And I think firstly what I'm going to do is actually go to war with the Venetians. Capturing the crucial port city of Venice would really help us out. And also trying to seize some of their territory down in Illyria will be good because we do want to try and take Constantinople at some point as well. Um, no, that's not good. <laughs> okay, I tried to move my, um, my spine to Prague to maybe open the gates. I'll move my priest to Nuremberg, and I think I might try and get some negotiations with some other factions with Agnes, but if not, we'll marry her to one of my um, f uh, generals, ideally. Mercenary is going to be huge in this. We're going to try and build watchtowers where we can as well. So I think we'll try and initially up in around the Germany region, just try and seize as much rebel territory as we can. So Maximilian Mandorf and Leopold will be mobilizing towards Prague. We want to try and capture that as quickly as possible. The army from Innsbruck with Otto von Kessel can go over the Maginot line, <laughs> as it were, I guess, push over to Strasbourg. We want to try and seize out Metz as quickly as possible. So early on, we want, we want to try and get as much rebel territory as we can. We do have an army here, but von Saxony needs to get to Hamburg. Uh, we could risk it and siege it out. The thing is, the Danes could take it. That's the only issue. So we'll try and mobilize uh, some of these forces north as well. We also want to try and build watchtowers where we can. We've also got Magdeburg there as well, which we would want to try and seize. 
But there's a fair few ways that we can go in this series. The thing is with the Holy Roman Empire, you are surrounded by a lot of factions. We've got the Danes to the north, Poland and Hungary to the east, and then we've got the French to the west, and then we've got the Italian states in the south. So I think what I would recommend and what I want to go for this series is I want to focus on the west rather than the south. You really do need to focus on the diplomacy game as the Holy Roman Empire. So we might even try and ally with Poland, Hungary, and Denmark as their territories aren't that wealthy and we can be drawn into a, a potentially a three, a four, a two front war. So I think going westward is more valuable because there's a lot more densely populated cities and just like the the financial disparity as, as well like the cities in the in the west and south and in the mediterranean are just so more valuable than going eastward where the pop isn't there the wealth isn't there and the territory is so sparsely in between one another especially in poland right back down in italy i think seizing venice is the play emperor von heinrich here we've got the faction leader and we do have a decent amount of military forces now, but I think we'll play this one. Um, we're going to have to manually play it against the Doge because they have their own faction leader there. So it's a 50-50. This is quite risky going after Venice this early on, but high risk, high reward. you got to risk it for the biscuit, as I always say. Or risk it for the brisket, if you're American. And let's hear the fantastic general speeches back in medieval too. Let's go. It is not my way to send men into needless peril during battle. But I do expect you to do your duty as I will do mine. If all do their duty, then the Empire will have victory here. Now, let's do other matters. Our foes don't look much like soldiers. More like a bunch of bankers, in fact. But then the loot from their corpses will be worth all our trouble. God's good graces, we shall strike them down. With God's good, with God's good graces, we shall strike down a quarter of our enemy's army today. Courage will be our watchword. Despair theirs. And so make your peace with God and your fellows. Do not brood on what is to come. Raise high the imperial banner. Go with God! God, I love Medieval 2 speeches. <laughs> Especially, like, they're such bad accents. They don't look like soldiers, they look like bunkers. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Whatever happened to that guy, I wonder, who did the voice acting for this? Oh, my God. Like, the French one is super wacky as well. There's even, like, a Russian one. Oh, I just love the speeches. It's such an ingenious mechanic as well, because sometimes if you listen closely, it can give you, like, campaign map intelligence, in the sense that quite often it's like, the general goes, we're facing uh, two-fourths of the enemy's army here, today. it's like, oh, okay, so if we win this one, that's half their army gone. So, I just love the um, mechanic for that, and also... As well, depending on the traits of your generals, you get if they're a, a crazy or a loon or they're mad, they quite... Con like, sometimes the general speeches are just, like, inaudible. <laughs> like, oh, there's the enemy, yeah, let's go, man. It's like, just like, it's like drunk. Oh, yeah, there's stuff like that as well, which is so funny. So, we're going to have to be a little bit careful here, as Venice is a large city. So, we'll move up our four ladders, one battering ram, and we do have two crossbows and bows as well. We'll try and get them to arc their shots up and over the walls and try and hit them as we leave the Emperor further back as well. So once we seize Venice, we're going to be able to use this as a huge trade node to give us access to that vital trade in and around the Mediterranean. So 45 regions is going to be quite a bit, but I think we can do it. We also will need to take uh, Rome and Constantinople. The thing is with the Holy Roman Empire, you have such a vast wealth of resources if you can direct that at and target certain factions you can really do well the thing is if you the thing is holy roman empire campaigns can really go like bad if for example the danes the poles 
the French and maybe like Milan like gang up on you. So we're really going to have to essentially blitzkrieg this campaign at certain factions. And the quicker we can get rid of some of the best and major factions in the game, the better we're going to be for the mid to late game. So I think focusing on Venice is definitely the play here in the south. Getting rid of them earlier on. We might even be able to peace out with them eventually as well. So I'm going to have one army group focusing on Italy and Bologna. I think we'll go after Milan as well. Securing northern Italy is so important important because we do need to try and take settlements as best as we can as fierce fighting is breaking out as the men of the holy roman empire the descendants of charlemagne are battering down the gates and fighting on the walls because the thing is the poles and hungarians they don't have the strongest unit rosters and i think you're better off going east and south rather than north and northeast because look the army roster doesn't compare first first of all but if you give milan the french potentially turns like give them give them 50 to 100 turns they can nearly just bunker on in and they're going to have like amazing armies so the quicker we get rid of them the better same with venice as well they can uh, snowball quite a little bit unfortunately my spearmen here are wavering slightly we're going to have to really rely on my bowmen here but it's been a while since i've played medieval team maybe even a year or so but i've been craving some vanilla as always it comes <laughs> around about one year it's like I've, I've got to do a vanilla campaign but there's a bunch of fact like i haven't obviously years and years ago i used to play stay in the steel a lot and and obviously i played a lot of medieval two mods such as third age and divide and conquer and the game of thrones mod but i haven't actually let's played too many pure vanilla medieval two campaigns and i think i'm kind of tempted to do so because there's a bunch of factions that i haven't let's played as and medieval two is such a good game man like even years and years on and i'm secretly hoping that there will be a rome 2 remaster in the future at some point as they just released the mobile version of the game as well so i'm really hoping for that okay so this is going to be a little bit tough here as the venetian doge has actually moved out faction leaders are incredibly tough in medieval 2 thank we've we've actually got a bit of rng there we've only we've managed to snipe him so that's going to cause a huge morale d uh, buff around the enemy's morale and forces so that's huge but you got to be really careful <laughs> in medieval 2 with faction leaders they can nearly single-handedly wipe out like four or five units especially on this difficulty like you, you you've really got to be careful we are slowly but surely progressing but thankfully we use those mercenaries we desperately needed them so it looks like if things go to plan it's currently about 55 percent in my favor we should be able to claim our first victory for the hre campaign good we're doing incredibly well so far um as we start conquering fellow christendom factions there is a potential that we can get excommunicated of course excommunicado oh, i love that as we got to deal with the pope mechanic as well i th i feel like we're not going to worry about the Pope too much <laughs> because we're going to have to take Rome itself. So, unfortunately, we might not go on crusade um, in this campaign within, like, uh, direct alliance with the Pope. Oh, you never know. Heinrich actually might die during um, a war or so here and there. He is a little bit old, actually, because sometimes that resets it. But if we're constantly going after Christian factions like Venice, Milan, France... I'm sure the Pope isn't going to like that overly too much. So we're still moving on in here, but fierce fighting is breaking out now on the streets of Venice. You just got to be super careful, because look at these drum towers, man. They can really rip roar through your infantry. Heinrich's now in there. He's really going to have to help us out in this one. But already he's lost 20 units within his general bodyguard. So I would recommend in this campaign, what, what we're going to try and do is focus on Venice, focus on Milan and France as the territory is far wealthy than I, I feel like we're going to be if we if we were to push against the danes or the poles i feel like we will be ex we're sort of spending resources in the wrong way we want to try and take as much territory as we can that's wealthy and we can make our money back going eastward yeah is fine but 
like if you look at the map like the density of cities is more westward than it is in the east it's kind of like in medieval uh rome 2 for example like the med like it was always beneficial to focus on italy and greece and sort of the hellenic world rather than gaul and, and spain for quite a long time but just because like the money is just not it's just not worth it even in like the rome remaster as well because it's even worse in that game it's even compounded by the fact well not worse but it's been compounded by the fact that there's wonders as well which are more eastward there's like hardly any uh westward but we're about to push into the town square here now unfortunately four units are routing but at the end of the day we're still using trash tier units oh my god but they're still incredibly effective but we will need to be relying on mercenaries thankfully we've got a lot of generals like we've got a really stacked family tree but i am open to doing more campaigns the only medieval 2 vanilla definitive edition campaign that i've already done on the channel is the byzantines but yeah we could go through we could go through all the entire roster there's so much content on medieval 2 vanilla that i haven't sort of let's play it on the channel i think why that is is because obviously i played it way way back in the day before i even made youtube videos and by the time i sort of got around to it i was sort of doing you doing youtube videos like way back in like 2012 2015 when this channel really kicked off i was mostly doing stain the steel and stuff um because i had already played the vanilla version of the stuff but now i'm like it's been so long i've it's it, like it's been so long it, it feels fresh going into it so we could do dlcs we could do more campaigns there's a bunch of expansions on this as well so let me know if that's something you would like to see in the comments. I might even do a vote. You know. Anyway, so we've got a couple of options here. I am going to sack the settlement as it is quite large. But check this out. We're getting 1,200 per turn now, which is huge. It's nearly double what we're getting here in Bologna. And we can even further expand the trade capacity in Venice. Okay, we're off to a really good start in this campaign. Turn 2, Venice has been captured. And now we need to take these territories up in the north. We'll take as much rebel territory as we can. We're going to have to fight this one here in Hamburg. But I think going after the other factions like Dem, I, I just don't know if it's worth it. Look, you never know. We, we, we could very well get betrayed if we don't alliance out with them anyway. But... That's where I'm sort of thinking. The thing is, <laughs> the beautiful thing about Medieval 2 and the sandbox experience of Total War, you can always have a plan of where you want to roughly go and expand and conquer, but everything can... Plans change <laughs> quite often. And, uh, yeah, you really have to think and be Johnny on the spot. Okay, so this is another big settlement here. We, we're going to have to be a little bit careful as we don't have a proper general and commander. I have sent... Uh, a general up north to come and help things out but we're just gonna have to be a little bit cautious in our approach now if you guys haven't played medieval 2 in a while and you, and you play this specific settlement there is a little bit of a cheese back on the left wall there that you can arc your shots up and over and hit the town square and receive very limited arrow fire at you so it's about here so as you can see we can hit the town square it can even sometimes encourage the defending garrison to charge out as well so it's a really good spot here because at the front of the castle there is currently four arrow tower drums but as you can see here we're getting a nice clean shot up and over straight at the town square and if you can get five six crossbow archer units get those armor piercing crossbows get those longbowmen you can really just if, if they've got all of their army in there you can basically win the siege battle just off that okay so i've taken a little bit of losses pushing up into hamburg which will be a really crucial key northern city and we will be able to recruit from it quite immediate, immediately and we'll be able to set military forces down into the Benelux region. If we can get the Netherlands and Belgium, potentially, that would be huge for the Holy Roman Empire. Okay, I'm going to send in my cavalry here, which is a little bit risky, but if we can 
hit them from multiple sides, we might be able to initiate the countdown. Like, swing around here. Come on, come on, swing around. There we go. So we're hitting them from multiple sides. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate. Our captain got demolished. Mm, we're wavering a little bit here. Maybe I've bitten off a little bit more than what I can chew. Oh, no, we're doing all right there. This can be a little bit tough. There's a peasant bowman here. That should be right. Focus on them then. Get my bowman in. We're really going to need help. Oh, you focus on them. We've traded back and forth. We've managed to take out their captain as well. Some of these rebel battles can be a little bit tricky, depending on what units they have, but most of them are going to be clear-cut auto-resolves, but it's just a bit harder when you don't have a general inside to help out. All right, so unfortunately that cavalry got absolutely decimated. To be fair, hitting them from two sides, spearmen, probably not the play. I thought they'd be able to pack a, pack a little bit more than a... Pack a bit more of a punch to be honest. Luckily we've got a bunch of ammunition in our bowmen still. Mm -hmm. So I maybe could have saved more men and Holy Roman Empire lives if we waited for that general to come but I still think we haven't lost this one just yet. You just got to be super quick here in taking Hamburg because the last thing you want is the Danes to secure such a huge and crucial fortress on the top of your empire. So there's only 30 remaining here. 70% to roughly theirs as well. Yeah, my cavalry just got shredded there. <laughs> it's because we caught them in the town square as well. Okay, there's a couple units there that are not moving and maybe bugged, which would be good. If we can get rid of everyone in the town square, we should be able to waltz on in and start the countdown. Only 10. There we go. Alright, so they've run out of ammunition, which is fine. We'll get them to draw their short swords eventually and go in. Alright, we might have to soon if they can't get those that last six. Alright, let's charge on in. And three minutes. We need to hold four. So what I'll do... Because once you start initiating the countdown, it gives out an order to rally at the um, town square. So we'll move you here to defend if need. But an absolute skeleton crew is probably going to win here today. That's two minutes remaining. We're probably not going to get a man of the hour because we killed the captain. <laughs> but that's alright. We will claim victory. A little bit sketchy, that one. Really, I'm surprised that my cavalry got shredded like that. Like, real bad. That was like a... That was a peasant trash tier spearman. And it knocked out a hundred. Oh, my God. I'm surprised how potent it was in defense. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's been a while, still getting back into the swing of things. Uh, we probably want to try and take Jerusalem as well at one point, because we get a public order bonus around the map. There's also, like, certain settlements that give bonuses around the uh, the campaign map as well. So, uh, I think we'll loot this one. But we've taken Hamburg. We've managed to rally and save some of those units in the end, but we will need to retrain them eventually. Okay, Von Saxony can get some more reinforcements. I would highly recommend mercenaries if you can. Those mercenary spearmen are actually so good. Like, the cost base analysis for them. Like, sometimes you think in, like, in DEI, for example, in Rome 2, like, mercenaries are, are quite expensive. You've got to be careful with them, and in some Total Wars. But in Medieval 2, they are so, so worth it. 
you can get some of the best recruit. Like they're better than like most of your recruitable forces. Oh, the Danes want trade. Uh, sure, we could marry the faction heir to the princess. I'm nearly tempted to do that. That could potentially give us a Cassus belly to their lands in the future. And it's been accepted. An alliance with Denmark and the Holy Roman Empire has been sealed. Cool. I believe Henry has received a Danish wife. Cool. Um, we might even try and ally with Hungary as well. If we can. Uh, just reject it. How about I give you a bit of cash money? Just to sweeten the deal. Uh, just reject it. Oh, well, that's annoying. Uh, the papal see wants trade? Sure. I, I do want to try and trade. We cannot another suggest with as many factions as we can. No, not interested. Great. Um, Hermann von Düsseldorf, thirty-nine. No, thank you. Ah, oh, cease hostile hostilities with Venice. Ah, uh, no, I'm afraid, not going to happen. Yeah, so Prince Henry, his children will be half Danish in the future. We'll move Otto von Kassel here to Bern. The Swiss capital. Get some crossbows in here as well. And I think, looking at all my generals, Otto von Kessel is my best looking general out of all of them. It is a legitimate strategy sometimes to level up your princess and snatch an enemy general from another nation. But I want to secure our family line. Keep it within. Alright. Maximilian Mandorf is currently besieging... Prague. We've got two generals here. They don't have any inside. Oh, most of their armies is made up of Slavic mercenaries, so we should be able to win that one. And we have taken the eastern rebel province, and I guess we'll sack as well, which will give us essentially enough money to fund a land clearance as well. Uh, we've got von Saxony here in Magdeburg, which we'll bring into as well. And, look, I'll try and auto-resolve some of these rebel territories. Okay, so we've got a little bit of cash now from taking those recent settlements. I think I want to try and just go on a bit, a bit of a recruitment splurge and just try and get as many military assets as we can so we can continue to expand and conquer and claim more territories for the Holy Roman Empire. Everything is coming up um, von Heinrich, I guess. Alright, so we're currently sieging out Metz and Bern. We're probably going to have to play the one at Bern because the garrison there is a lot bigger. I will try and get some more mercenaries where we can as well. But we're doing alright so far. Uh, Metz. Uh, okay, that one's in our favour, so we can auto resolve that one. Especially with Prince Henrik there. Yeah, I will play against battles against major factions, but there's so many damn rebel territories that I don't even think they're interesting fights. They're clear cut. Order resolves mostly, except for the ones that I have to play. I can't wait to, as well, get access to merchant guilds, um, which is still going to be a while off. I want to try and get those Teutonic Order cavalry. I think that would be really quite cool. Because the whole guild system in the game is, is really cool as well. <laughs> like, the, you just need to, like, there's like the whole guild thing is crazy because there's like there's missions as well. They kind of act like. Uh, the best way to kind of like, I don't know, like wonders, I guess, to some extent. Um, they give you like faction bonuses for stats and units and can help your public order and trade and whatnot as well. As we're just mobilizing the forces here, going for Stettin and a couple of other rebel territory before the Poles take it. Now, uh, Venice, what do they want? I'd nearly actually sue for peace with them if they would offer me it. No, they want to bribe the settlement. Oh, we've actually been attacked here in Bern. Oh, I'll fight this one. Ooh, maybe not actually. <laughs> uh, I don't think that was really good odds. I might wait for Prince Henry to come back just to get us some additional reinforcements. Um, those recruits have been, well, recruited and brought in, I guess. That's annoying because we lost the siege equipment there. Oh, that's it's quite a huge garrison, that one. Uh, we'll continue eastward as well, only as far to the Polish border. 
Uh, we can just walk on in here as the, f the settlement doesn't have any walls. And we'll try and convert that as well. Um, between cities and castles as well. Coastal, coastal settlements probably should be cities because they can get you more money. And you kind of want to have castles in your front lines. Uh, Sicily want trade as well. We want to try and get as much trade as we can. The more the better. We should be able to trade really quite well with Sicily now that we have Venice uh, under our control. Ah, oh, damn. And thank you. Also, there's the whole chivalry slash dread mechanic in the game that we have to deal with. Dread essentially gives morale decreases to enemy combatants, while chivalry in battle gives you a morale bonus. I believe as well, chivalric generals, if they're garrisoned in settlements, give public order growth as well. So you kind of want to have... I personally like to go with dread for my aggressive conquering generals. While I like to have sort of chivalric other generals that are garrisoning in settlements. I think that's the play that I usually go with. Uh, France wants trade. We haven't been able to nail down some of these trade negotiations. But it may be because we're just asking for too much stuff. Um, I'd nearly make an alliance with France if they were interested. No. Just to keep them off our back. As we're probably going to be finishing off the Venetians, and potentially revoir, Milan as well. It has been a They're still trying to bribe Bologna, which is interesting. Poland. Negotiating with us. I have uh, trade will just straight up accept that then. The more the better. Mm, England won't trade. Sure. I believe at this time period... It was a fab, very well. The French king is actually one of my nephews or something. It's kind of like really quite close. He's either my nephew or cousin. Like royalty-wise, we're really quite close out of all the the major factions between us and England. Now Leopold will marry off. Okay, well after the retreat at Bern, I have mobilised some more forces. We've got two generals here now. We've got Otto von Kessel uh, leading the line. So we should be able to win this one. Bern is actually kind of a tricky settlement uh, to take here in Switzerland. So we're going to have to play this one manually. Through St. Michael's intercession, we have been brought to this place. Brought here to fight for God's glory and in his name. Our enemies must quail at the thought of our German might. We would do well to pray because the shedding of blood is an offense, but it is one that we willingly do, for by it we establish God's peace. We do this for the Empire and God. These rebellious knaves and villains are not fit to breathe the same air as we honest Germans. They must all die before dawn comes again. This is a mercy. Because they richly deserve the gallows for turning against their betters. I see little reason to needlessly risk German lives today. Let us rain death upon our foes and let them struggle to come to grips with us. And so make your peace with God and your fellows. Do not brood on what is to come. Raise high the Imperial Banner! Go with God! Okay, well, let's battle the Swiss. Let's move my siege equipment up. And... We'll get my better quality fighters on the ladders. There we go. And then we'll grab all my bowmen as well. And we'll go and deploy them uh, left side over here. But so far, we're doing alright. We've managed to only be at war with one major faction. And... Toppling the Venetian Doge, 
We've really set them back quite a bit. They do have territory, but it's a little bit sparse and in between Venice. They do have territory in Illyria and in Crete, I do believe. So if they are to mobilize forces, would only potentially maybe get attacked from Vienna. Um, it's going to be quite some time before they even have a force to mobilize against us. As at the end of the day, we did take their capital. But it's such a crucial city. I would recommend playing as the Holy Roman Empire. Try and take Venice as early on as you can before they build up. It's just such a decent territory. But anyway, we're focusing on Bern, which I could potentially convert to a city. Depending, like, I, I think as well, depending where you're going to have most of your wars, you sort of want to pad cities and castles, like, in lines, essentially. Uh, there is a bonus in the sense of making sure that coastal regions are cities in the sense that increases trade navally like it's just it's just more beneficial but you've also got to be careful as well because you want to be able to use and have a vital military unit production line i tend to kind of look at the natural topography of europe to see where castles should be set for example the crucial choke point here in hamburg to the north um, keeping that as a castle to fend off any danes is quite good also it allows you to send military forces and assets into france where we're where we're going to be eventually attacking also as we're looking at the various mountain ranges throughout europe the carpathian mountains and pyrenees if you can build some absolutely huge fortresses there you're going to be laughing throughout your campaign. Okay, so the gate has been destroyed. And we're going to be able to move our way on in. Cool. So once we've taken all this territory in and around Germany. And try and unite the various Germanic realms and sphere of influence. We can probably start going after two, three major European factions because the quicker we can get them out the better because if you can stifle and, and hamper a major faction's army and economy pretty early on you can basically stuff them for the whole campaign for example like I said Venice have lost their capital they're, they're going to have a really hard try, time mobilizing an army they only have one territory connecting to me like down in Illyria, Croatia, or wherever it is, technically, whatever. Baltic, modern, whatever, whatever modern Baltic country it is. Um, same with France and stuff as well. But we also do have to be quite careful because you can get surrounded and we can get overextended. A bit. We also have to sort of keep in mind about the papacy as well. We do have a mission to take Rome. We'll probably leave that to the last settlement we take. Because from what I can remember, if you do declare war upon the papacy and act on a war against the papacy as a war on all of Christendom, kind of like NATO. <laughs> an attack on one is an attack on all, I guess. I uh, never thought, never thought about that. <laughs> the Pope has got his um, the NATO coalition going on. Oh God! All right, the captain's now gone, and I might try and move all my archers here. So we're shooting up and over. You can also, as well, um, use walls to your advantage in medieval two. If they, if the AI decides to sit back. In the settlement, you can actually get them up and over the walls as well, and actually shoot from the walls downward, which is incredibly strong as well. There's just a lot of infantry, so I haven't needed to do it. Look, there's a slight damage reduction of making my archers shoot up and over the walls. <laughs> Everyone has to get their mathematics and angles on point. <laughs> yeah, a lot easier than, a lot harder than shooting down. 
Okay, just going to try and vary up some of the firing patterns here. So we're not just focusing purely on one unit. Just essentially like... This shotgun spraying. <laughs> Real scattergun approach with our arrows. But unfortunately, our infantry is a lot to be desired early on, which is understandable. Their morale ain't the best. But once we start sacking and getting rid of captives as well, we should be able to raise the dread of some of my generals. Like if you were... It also depends on your play style as well, with the dread and chivalry mechanic. If you're someone who likes to charge on in, be aggressive, and conquer, I would highly recommend dread. But if you sort of like to role play, you want to have chivalrous knights, and maybe as well, if you've got a defensively minded army build or faction. Chivalry is actually not too bad as well. And you can really grow your settlements massively. I think you need a hybrid of the two. I think you need your conquerors to go out and doing so. Oh, however, there is also the consequence. I haven't mentioned that in this video. But there's a consequence of dread as well. So, for example, what I'm going to do and what I like to do is like to keep my generals and family members as the fighting men. I, I like to do it for, I'll do it for like all Total Wars. I like to have my family line as the generals, the conquerors, the fighters, um, to keep the power with the faction. However, if you get your dread up nice and high and do that for Medieval 2, you will get disloyal generals. Um, so that's a consequence of it. So we will have to keep an eye on that, which is super interesting because other high-ranking generals probably don't like the fact <laughs> that there's so many bloodthirsty, dread dreaded generals. Oh, we've actually been... Oh, no, 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 no. Ah! Oh, no, I've been caught there. Oh, no! Far out! A Swiss cavalry unit's flanked me here. No one will expect the Swiss Inquisition. I'm going to have to send my generals to go deal with it. We should be all right. Also, um, when I say with my archers I'm going to draw our short swords, what it actually that m means, like mechanically, is when my bowmen run out of ammunition, you press Alt on your keyboard and attack, you left click attack, and it gets the AI to draw their swords and attack if you're playing with a bowman. Also, that special attack actually works for a lot of units in this game. For example, you would have seen the cavalry charge there with lances. I believe if you left click hold, they actually draw swords slash maces for units. So, it's actually better off if you're a cavalry unit running down infantry, you're better off using the lances because of the high impact charge. However, if it's a cavalry on cavalry fight, like two melees going at each other, I think you're actually better off to left click, uh, sorry, alt attack because they draw their swords. They actually do better against cavalry. So there's even like that as well. Man, there's so much tips and tricks and and strategy for this game. It's, it's kind of crazy. I would like to get some merchants as well at some point. Not the biggest fan. But particularly in the late game, they're definitely worth it. Just, just depends if you get to it. At the moment, we're so hamstrung on our budget, like focus, focusing absolutely every single coin and copper to our military. Even the economy is leaving like a little secondary point. Because we just want to try and gobble up those rebel territories as quick as we can before any other nation snaps them up. Then... Once we're a bit secure, we can focus on getting merchants just to snowball our economy a bit more. It's basically a bit of a luxury towards the end. But early on, it's only 30, 70 Florence here and there. But so far, you got to give it to the Swiss. They've melted away my infantry. And I'm going to have to send in my bowmen drawing their short so swords. When they run out of ammunition, I think technically they um, 
automatically go to the sword icon. But if you ever need to in a hurry that you've got ammunition and you quickly need a bit of, Oh, we need, a, we need to pin a unit down. While, like for example, in that a surprise attack, if I caught it earlier and knew it was coming, I could have made this to be like, okay, draw your swords, man, just hold it and then wait for cavalry reinforcements. But so far, some of these generals are gaining a name for themselves, securing the Germanic provinces. So far, Emperor. Is it? I, I, I said Heinrich at the start. I think it's Heinrich, actually. Heinrich. Yeah, Heinrich. I was going to say Heinrich Himmler, but <laughs> I wouldn't want to read. <laughs> well, I don't, don't want to have him associated with that guy <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, I think it is Heinrich. I don't know. We'll go with Heinrich. As we're going to be able to take Bern and bring Switzerland into the Holy Roman Empire. Oh, we've managed to gazumped the Milanese as well. That are heading north. And Otto von Kessel, my, well, I guess he's my son in law now. Um, has taken burn. He's becoming a pretty decent commander. Mission success. Cease hostilities. Really? We completed that? I wasn't even really trying, <laughs> to be honest. Alright, well that, now that's done. I guess we can push towards Venice now in Croatia. Um, Emperor Heinrich here. Hmm, it's a shame he's already quite chivalrous, because I do want to try and make him dreaded. So it's going to be a little while before we can switch that back over. We're going to push into Zagreb and take it. Only a handful of Slavic rebels inside. Nothing too crazy. And we've got reinforcements coming down from Vienna with the Emperor's son, Leopold. Venice have moved up here. I've actually been focusing on other rebel factions. I wasn't. I was like, I don't really care what the Pope has to say. But I can really do two fucks, to be honest. But, um, I guess it just worked out well. So we're not compounding the fact of smashing the Venetians. We haven't been excommunicated yet. It's still turn 10. We're still pretty early, but it's only going to be a matter of time before we get kicked out of the, the Pope's boy club, <laughs> which is most of Western Christendom. We're going to build some rams. We're going to go for Ve uh, Florence. And Otto von Kessel will send Henry down. But we might make preparations to uh, maybe go against Milan. That have actually taken Dijon. Uh, I've sent von Saxony to um, Antwerp. Okay, we've got some rebels here that have popped up. And we'll give chase against the Venetians as well. So Leopold and Heinrich, the Emperor, can make their way against the Venetians. And then eventually I want this army group to take Greece, essentially. There's not too much territory down here. Obviously, the Venetians are at Regista. Regusta. Um, Maximilian Mandorf can go down to... Florence. We've got siege equipment building in Belgium. The siege equipment in Belgium has been built. So we should be able to take our first piece of territory in the Benelux region. Another rebel territory. No need to play that one. However, we are getting dangerously close to the British Isles and their sphere of influence. It's only one naval stop to Bruges or Antwerp. And then we've got Bruges as well. Okay, Maximilian can move to Florence as well. And we'll be able to take the city as well. We might actually get those mercs in. There we go, just to sweeten the deal. There we go. Just to make it a little bit nicer. Oh, we completed a mission actually. Oh, 2,500 Florence. For Florence. <laughs> Perfect, I'll take that. Alright, we'll move you into 
Regusta. And I guess we'll just get you to run down that unit there. Alright, back on the recruitment splurge. Just want to try and get whatever units we can get access to, ideally. The more the merrier. Retraining at Antwerp. Vienna as well. Uh, let's do a land clearance. And wherever we can do that. Get the population on growing. Would be ideal. Okay. I think it's time to move out from our position at Antwerp and push towards Bruges. Okay. Metz is doing alright. Um, hmm. I'm just looking at Milan. We actually might be able to make a play for them now. That's quite a large army that's pushed out there. And we've taken... Like, we can't conquer anything south... Oh. I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to declare war upon Milan. That's a huge army that's come out and intercepted us on the border there. I can't not attack that, eh? Oh, well. We've rushed into this war a little bit. But that's a massive opportunity to intercept the largest Milanese army that I can see within my vision. Let's hear the general speech. Because we're better off fighting this on the field of battle than actually marching into the city streets of Milan just yet. Now, let's do other matters. Those Milanese are good with money. It will help them when they count their debt. But will it help their women folk with the morning? <laughs> with God's good graces, we shall strike them down. With God's good... With God's good graces, we shall strike down a quarter of our enemy's army today. Courage will be our watchword. Despair theirs. And now, let's to the foe. I feel hungry already. And war gives me an excessive appetite. Let's to the battle and send the peace. <laughs> Alright, let's start the battle. So looking at the army build for this one. Mostly town militia and some spearmen. We do have some mercenaries here which are really going to help us. We've got crossbowmen as well. Three units of bowmen. Uh, we do have two generals bodyguard, which is going to be huge. Yeah, I'm surprised they postured there. To be fair, they were kind of heading in and around my territory as they did recently take the French city of Dijon. And they were probably mobilizing against Bern. Um, but like going for the AI settlement, not necessarily against us. But now that we move to the border... Um, yeah, I can't not take this opportunity. So, war has broken out between the Holy Roman Empire and Milan. We're still at war with the Venetians, of course. But if we can get rid of Milan, we can secure northern Italy. And then leave only two factions on the peninsula. One being the Papal Sea. Which don't usually tend to have the largest armies. One or two stacks at the most. Depending if they can take rebel territories like Genoa. I quickly just want to invert my flanks slightly. Just to give us our crosswomen some protection. They do seem to be charging against us, which is super interesting. In the snow-tipped olive trees of Italy. We might even be able to flank here if we're lucky. Alright, some of my cavalry is being concealed in the forest quickly enough. So we formed a defensive position. I'm going to send my cavalry in. Because we've got a really good charge here. Against their bowmen. Let's swing this thing around here as well. Because what I would kind of fear is going against Milan if they had a full stack in there. 
Like, you saw the Siege of Venice <laughs> with just the faction leader and, ha like, not even half a stack. And it was a little bit costly. We've managed to get the RNG there and snipe the enemy general, or captain, to be precise. Brilliant. And they might get lulled into a false sense of security to attack. It's currently about 55% in my favor as the Milanese clash upon the Holy Roman Empire front line. Our cavalry is harassing them quite well on the right-hand side. Hopefully we can keep it up. But if we can be successful here today, take minimal casualties, we should be able to gobble up that Milanese territory, which would be fantastic. Such a wealthy and crucial couple regions of cities in northern Italy. And then we'll be able to take Milan. The fashion capital of the world. <laughs> Get Heinrich's, um, some of the hot togas fresh out of Constantinople or some shit. I don't know. Oh, God. Right. I know we're charging into Spearman there, but because the general's gone, we might be able to cause a morale break. There we go, and they're shaking as well. Good. Let the infantry hold. Let the archers hit their shots, and we'll get our cavalry to wrap around and do the business. And run down the last of the Milanese here. Oh, that's so lucky. What were they thinking? Coming out to meet us there. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? Intercepting. Nearly a full stack of enemy combatants and just shredding them. Oh, to be fair, they're actually regaining a little bit of ground there. They might actually go for a secondary charge as my cavalry is just trying to run down as many of them as possible. But this could be a really good victory for Otto von Kessel, who could have just been a random generated general throughout this series. I did marry him to Princess Agnes. So the royal line will continue. Yeah, I wanted to try and keep it in the Holy Roman Empire family. or keep it in within to some extent. It's also a good way to keep your generals intact as well. And Medieval Who has this really cool mechanic as well that if you have a fantastic general, his traits of and command and being fantastic is hereditary as well, so it can get passed on down. So... Even if you've got like some really awesome generals who are quite young, because they're probably better than what you can snatch up from the campaign map mostly anyway. You're sometimes better off marrying your princesses into the general elite that you have. I also kind of like to roleplay as well to some extent. Alright, there's only six spearmen here, but we've done super so, super so well in that offensive. I'm loving it. There we go. No one shall doubt that we are the oh wow, only 200 men. We've managed to dispatch 1.3k. And we'll definitely get rid of the captives there as well. Alrighty, we're in a really good position now to invade Milan for the next episode. And we'll also push into Genoa as well. Well, unfortunately on that note there, guys, it's time to end the video here. I've played for about an hour or so here today. Thank you very much for watching episode 1 of my Medieval 2 Definitive Edition Holy Roman Empire campaign. We've done super well. We've managed to take Venice. We're going to try and focus and get rid of them in the next episode. And now we've got to deal with the war against the Milanese. We've managed to gobble up most of the rebel territory in and around Germany quite effectively. So we're going to get to a point where there's not going to be many, too many rebel territory left and we will have to go to war with major factions like potentially your Danes or your France or your Poles, whatnot here and there. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for episode two coming out the exact same time tomorrow. And let me know if you'd like to see more Medieval 2 on the channel. I'm definitely open to doing more. We will be trying to hit our long victory conditions or we will be hitting we're going to be going for that i won't end the series until we do if you guys want to see sort of the late game well past the um what was it it's like the mid 1200s doesn't it this campaign potentially um 
support it and I'll do more. We'll have to see. We could get to a point where we do the Mongols, the Tomb Rids, and potentially go into the New World as well because there's a bunch of that as well. Um, it takes a while before you go into the New World. 150 turns, 200, until you get the the port, isn't it? Um, well, you get you have to build the specific ship to actually traverse the high seas, don't you? But anyway, a lot of exciting stuff to come. I'm loving medieval too. You can tell by the sound of my voice and uh, this episode. I've had an absolute blast. I've had um, so much fun. It's good being back on medieval too, and I can't wait to play more and bring out more videos for you fellas. So, all right, got to play the outro now and say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members and do all the social media jazz. But anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C, and White P. My name is Ben Simsey. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>